very warm welcome to the teaching for the parish evangelization cells. The theme I have chosen is Are they assuring or sheer empty promises? The Gospel of John from chapter 13 verse 36 to chapter 17 verse 26 contains a very extensive farewell discourse of Jesus punctuated at some points by questions from his disciples and at other points an unbroken monologue. Christ in chapter 14 verses 12 to 14 makes two stunning promises which have always mesmerized me. I quote the first promise. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. The second promise and whatever you ask in my name this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name I will do it. In this first part of the teaching I wish to answer you by way of three clarifications. The first astonishing, startling promise found in chapter 14, verse 12. The first observation, clarification. We come across two rather distinct words in John's Gospel. The first one is signs. Signs are miracles that bear witness to Jesus' identity as Messiah and Son of God and lead unbelievers to faith in Him. The second term is works and this term includes both his miracles and all the other activities of Jesus' entire ministry. That is to say, his deeds of humility, service and love, which perfectly exhibit the Father's activity evident in Jesus. We read in John's Gospel, the Father who abides, dwells in me, does his works. The second clarification. In what sense are the works of Jesus' disciples, namely those who believe in him, you and I, greater than his works? They are greater, not because his disciples perform more spectacular miracles, and astounding deeds than he did, but because they are greater in their worldwide scope and reach. They decidedly effect the transformation of individual lives and of whole cultures and societies. The entire ministry of the Church to the world since Pentecost, since Pentecost Day, has unquestionably surpassed Jesus' entire earthly ministry. For example, on the day of Pentecost, about 3,000 converts were added to the initial body of 120 believers as a response to Peter's 
first sermon that was more people than had believed during Jesus' entire three years of public ministry. Third, clarification. The disciples' works are the same as the works that I do, are the same as the works of Jesus. In other words, there is no distinction between what Jesus does and what the disciples do. The distinction, however, lies between what Jesus has done so far and what will do through them, through you and I, through Jesus' disciples, by going to the Father. Their achievement of greater works than these is purely possible because Jesus, subsequent to his finished work on the cross, is going to the Father and will send the Holy Spirit. Again in John's Gospel we read, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Let us comment on this quotation from John chapter 14, verse 16. Jesus' departure is utterly crucial, important, for only through that can the Holy Spirit become a reality in his disciples, in each one of us. It is interesting to note in the above quotation that Jesus calls the Spirit another advocate. This should not be taken to mean that the Father will send another person, namely an advocate. Jesus is the first former paraclete who is now sending a, se a second paraclete. This means, and this is important, that the ongoing work of the Spirit will be a continuation of the work of Jesus during the disciples' time, during the church's time, during our time. The word paraclete is unique to John in the New Testament. The Greek parakletos is related to the verb parakaleo that describes someone called to be present where the speaker is, called to stand alongside the speaker. Thus, the best translation is advocate, so that Jesus is pointing to the Spirit's judicial or legal service. Now, what question does this theme prompt us to ask? Question for our group discussion. If it is true that God's power has taken our precedence in Jesus, faith in him will inevitably bring to us power from God to perform the same works that Jesus performs. How? By uniting us with Jesus and the Father, faith gives us a share in the power they possess. So, every believer is able to perform Jesus' works and even greater ones through the power of the Holy Spirit, the second paraclete. Do we honestly, sincerely believe that Jesus' first astonishing promise in John chapter 14, verse 12, is a firm assurance for us too. Do we really believe that it is directed to each one of us, Christ's disciples? God bless.